All right, so as I said, we are literally picking up where we left off here. What we're going to talk about in this video here is impedance, admittance, um, and reactance. There is also something called acceptance as well, which is a, um, something that occasionally we talk about. Um, but I'm going to skip that um, in today's lesson. All right, so first off, let's go ahead and re-examine here. We said that these are all Ohm's Law type relationships, but even more importantly, we can write essentially what I would call an Ohm's Law for steady state. I'll call this an Ohm's Law for steady state. And what we have here is we have v is equal to z times i. So z is what we call my impedance. Um, and depends on circuit element. And when I say depends on the circuit element, the impedance value is going to be different depending on what the circuit element is or the formula for computing it. And also the units of this are ohms. Okay, so let's go ahead, well before let's, that, let's go ahead and write down what we have as far as the other things here. We have also that the reactance and is um, this is actually defined to be the imaginary portion of the impedance. And then the admittance this is equal to 1 over the impedance. So we're going to make a little bit of a table here. So we'll say circuit element, impedance, reactance, and admittance. Okay, so for the resistor, the impedance is straightforward. It's just R. And since the reactance is the imaginary portion of the impedance, there is no imaginary portion to resistor. Resistors are all real valued. There is no reactance. So I'll just leave that as a blank there. And then the admittance is 1 over R. And then we have our inductor. The inductor here is J omega L for the impedance. So that means the reactance is the imaginary portion, which is just omega L. And then the admittance is 1 over J omega L, which you could rewrite as negative J over omega L. Now, one thing I want to point out here in this formula is notice that the impedance of the inductor depends on the frequency. And that's going to be very important. Later in the course, we're going to talk about how um, certain uh, components behaves as shorts or opens depending on the frequency of the solution, or not the solution, the frequency of the input um, function. And then we also have resistor inductor, and then of course we have the capacitor. And its impedance is 1 over j omega c which is the same thing as negative j over omega c. We'll use both formulas, so it's important to remember both. Um, the reactance, though, um, really you need to use this one here when you're looking for um, what the reactance is. So it's negative 1 over omega c. And then the admittance would just be j omega c. 
Okay, so if the screen just jumped there on you, that's because I actually had paused the video recording um, to check something else out here. So I'm back to recording here. So um, let's go ahead and um, look at an example here uh, dealing with this. Um, so this example here is that we have an inductor it's a 20 millihenry inductor and we've got some current going through I and we have plus minus voltage here and so the current is equal to 10 cosine 10,000 T plus 30 degrees Okay, and we're asked to find several things here. So we're asked to find the inductance the reactance the admittance and just snooze that um, and then the steady state voltage. All right. So, first off, we're supposed to find the inductance here. I don't know why I wrote A again here. Um, not the inductance. The inductance is given in the problem. Getting my eyes messed up here, the impedance. I knew something didn't sound quite right. We're supposed to add the find the impedance. Now this is a fairly straightforward thing. We just have a formula here for an inductor. It's just J omega L. So now we have to be careful sometimes with omega here. Remember that omega, I'm just going to put it off to the side here. Omega is in the units are in rads per second. And the reason I point this out is sometimes in some problems you'll be given that the frequency, for instance, is let's say one kilohertz. This here is not omega. But remember, omega is always 2 pi f. And now also remember that if it's just a number times t, that number is always omega. So you got to keep that straight when you're doing these computations or you could get the wrong uh, imp uh, impedance for these. So this is really just a plug and chug with some numbers here. So we have J times 10,000 times 20 millihenries which gets me J200 and again this would be ohms. Okay, so then part, um, this would be part A. Part B is very simple because my reactance is just the imaginary portion of the impedance. So that's simply just 200 and we keep the same units of ohms. Now part C is asking for what the admittance is and y is my admittance, which is 1 over z, which again, that's fairly simple, 1 over j200, which is simply equal to negative j5 milli, and then the units for this are Siemens, um, and that's spelled S-E-I-M-E-N-S, -E um, but it's a capital S, not to get confused with seconds. Um, now, I'll be honest, we probably won't use admittance um, too often in this course. Um, depending on the area of electrical engineering you go into, admittance is something that's used more frequently um, than what we will use it in, in this course here. All right, so 
negative j5 millisiemens for the emittance. Now part D is to find the steady state phasor voltage and remember voltage is just equal to impedance times my current. Now this is actually relatively easy to do and so we really just have to plug in our things here. Now um, let me rewrite here what we have. So we have I is equal to, because let's back a little bit further here, it was 10 cosine of 10,000 T plus 30 degrees. And I don't know, I may have forgotten to put the units on it at the very beginning of the problem, but the units are milliamps. Um, and so in order to do this, we already know what the impedance is, but we need to know really what the uh, phasor current is. And so this is going to be 10 at an angle of 30 degrees. Now there are two ways to approach this problem and I'll show you what I mean by a second here is that we have if we plug everything in here we're going to have V is equal to J200 times 10 at an angle of 30 degrees. Now the issue here is this is you know rectangular form and this is polar form. So we need to convert either both of these to rectangular or both of them to polar in order to finish out the computations. Now you can do either one, both of them will get the same answer, um, but sometimes you know it can be helpful to know that one way might be quicker or easier. And in this case, honestly, I think converting everything to polar is going to be the easiest one here. And I believe I had mentioned this previously, but if I haven't, you really want to get used to some of the very common ones here as far as the J's only and things like that. So remember our complex plane, we have the real axis and the imaginary axis. If you have J200, well that's literally just going to be plotted on the Y axis here, and this would be 200. Um, and the key thing about that is then, well, it's very easy to see that J200 is simply 200 at an angle of 90 degrees. Uh, another common one would be if you had, and I'm just going to write different numbers here, let's say 35 at an angle of negative 90 degrees, this would just simply be, um, I'm sorry, well, it, it's, it's the correct thing here, I did it backwards, but this would be negative J 35. So negative J 35 corresponds to 35 at an angle of negative 90 degrees, where a positive J corresponds to the number at an angle of 90 degrees. Alright, so that makes this really easy because then what I can do is I can rewrite this as my voltage is equal to 200 at an angle of 90 degrees times 10 at an angle of 30 degrees, and then I should maybe remind myself here, I maybe should have put it up here, this is milliamps, and this is milliamps here. Now, we just multiply those numbers together, so you have 10 milli times uh, 200, so that gets me 2, and then remember when you're multiplying polar numbers here, you get to just add the angles, so this would be 90 plus 30 degrees, which would be 2 at an angle of 120 degrees, and the units of this would be volts, but then you always want to write this back in the original form, so the steady state solution is 2 cosine of 10,000 T plus 120 degrees volts. All right. Now, as I said, there's another way we could do this. Um, and what, by saying another way, there's just another set of computations you could do. So we wound up with V, v being J200 um, times 10 at an angle of 30 degrees milliamps. Now instead, we could convert this to polar, or not polar, rectangular form. And so we'd have J200 times 10 cosine of 30 degrees plus J10 sine of 30 degrees milliamps. And then doing these conversions, this would be J200 Cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2, so this would be 5 square root of 3 
plus sine of 30 degrees is a half, so this would be J5 milliamps. So then you just multiply in through by the 200, and so if you multiply in through by the 200, and keeping in mind these are milliamps here, you would get J square root of 3 plus J squared volts, but remember J squared is just negative 1, so you'd have negative 1 plus J square root of 3. Then I would most likely, I always just use my calculator, convert this to polar, and if I convert that to polar, it shouldn't be too surprising that we get 2 at an angle of 120 degrees volts, which I won't write it as V um, equals the you know 2 cosine because it's obviously the same answer. So two different ways. You should feel comfortable doing it both ways. Um, you need to be able to be comfortable with doing it in polar and also with doing it in rectangular. And remember, adding, you really never want to do in polar. You want to do those in rectangular form. All right.